All right then gang, so we've seen how to use the flex component to control the layout of different elements and components in a row. Next, I wanna talk about another way that we can lay out content using the grid component and also another component called simple grid. Now, both of these components use CSS grid under the hood to lay out content in rows and columns. The simple grid component is a really, really easy way to make a quick responsive grid layout. And the grid component is a bit more of a bare bones grid that needs a little more setup and work, but it gives us then more flexibility in return. Again, this is not gonna be a tutorial about CSS Grid and how it works. For that, I've got a complete course all about CSS Grid and I'll leave a link to that down below. I just wanna focus on how we implement a grid system in Chakra UI using the grid components available to us. So we're gonna start with the simple grid component and we're gonna use that inside the dashboard. So I actually want to get rid of all of this stuff right here and we'll delete a few things from up here as well. We don't need the box styles anymore. And in fact, we can get rid of some of these components. We're not gonna need any of those, but we will be using boxes, so we'll keep that in. Okay, so we want a simple grid. So we use the simple grid component like so. And now anything inside this simple grid will become an item on that grid. Now we need to pass a prop here to say how many columns we want this grid to be. So the name of the prop is columns and then inside parentheses or curly braces rather, we say how many columns we want this grid to be. I'm gonna choose four. Now inside here, we can lay out the content. So I'm just gonna use boxes. So we also need to import this simple grid component, by the way, at the top. Let me just do that. All right, so each box is gonna be styled with a background equal to white, so we can see it on the screen. We'll give each one a height property as well, and that's gonna be equal to 200 pixels. You can just use H here if you prefer, that's the shortcut. Um, we'll give each one a border of one pixel, and we'll say it's gonna be solid as well, the border. So that's pretty much it. So now what I'd like to do is create a few of these boxes. So I'll do three sets of four. So let me copy that and paste it down here a couple more times. So we have 12 boxes and they're all gonna be grid items inside this grid. And remember we said we want four columns, right? So this is the first column, second, third, and fourth. Then it will go to a new row, first, second, third, and fourth column, and so forth. So if I save this now and preview, we can see we get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's now all displayed on this grid right here. And the items get smaller as you make the screen smaller as well, okay? So what I'd like to do now is, first of all, apply spacing between each one of these. So we can do that by using a spacing prop. So spacing is equal to, and you can use a pixel value if you want, or you can just place the value in here in curly braces, so 10 pixels, or rather strength 10. And if I now make this smaller, we can see the grid gap stays the same, but the elements get smaller inside it. All right, and now what I'd like to do is, if you notice, when I get smaller over here, the grid items get really squashed, right? We'd probably wanna make it so that it's a bit more responsive and apply a minimum width to each one of these items so that when it reaches that width, some of the elements go on to the next row. So we can do that. We can come to the simple grid component and we can give this a min child width prop. We can set that equal to something. So for example, 250 pixels. So 250 pixels, right? And what that's gonna mean is that when we make this smaller, at the point where the items are 250 pixels, and for a start, you can see that first of all, one of these has come up to the row because we have the space to have 250 times five now, even though we specified columns equal four. If we have this min child width, we don't really need this anymore because we're just basically allowing this to dictate the columns. So if I save it, it's gonna be the same. But as you can see, when we get smaller screen sizes, when it reaches 250 pixels, each one of these, one of the items is gonna to go to the next row and so forth. So we get three and then two. So it's nice and responsive out of the box, which is pretty nice, right? Now I do wanna apply some padding to the grid itself over here, just so it's not right up against the edge of the browser. So P is equal to 
10 pixels, save that. And now we get those little gaps at the side. That's better. All right, so that's a nice responsive grid, an easy way to create a grid as well. Now, like I said, there's another type of grid component that gives us a bit more flexibility, but we need to put a little more work into it in order for it to work how we want it to, okay? So we're gonna do that inside the root layout. Now, ultimately on our web page, what I'd like is for this stuff right here to sit on the right. So the nav bar and the content, that's all gonna sit on the right. And then on the left, we're gonna have a sidebar that goes down here. So we're gonna create a grid layout. So we have the sidebar on the left and then the nav and the content on the right, okay? So let's try doing that using the grid component. Okay, so what I'd like to do is change this div into a grid component. So click on that to import it. And then down inside the grid, we want this stuff on the right and then a sidebar on the left. So for the sidebar, let's just do a span for now and some text inside that to say sidebar. We'll make that as a separate component later on, but for now that's like a placeholder for the sidebar. Now at the minute, these are gonna be three grid items on their own, but I want this to be a grid item and all of this to be one grid item as well. Now, before we do that, I'm gonna set the template columns. Now, if you've used CSS grid before, we know we can use a template columns property. And we set that equal to something like one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. So there's three columns, each taking up one fraction of the width of the page. Or we can use the repeat function this is just regular CSS, and we can say we want six columns, and each one is one fraction. So it repeats this six times. So that would be six columns, each one fraction. So we're gonna have six columns inside this grid, right? Now, I also want the background of this grid to be a light gray color, so I'll set that equal to gray, and then strength 50, which is a really, really light gray. Okay, so now each one of these would be grid items. If we take a look, we can see automatically they're now sitting next to each other. This is on the left right here. This is on the right, okay? And the sidebar is way on the left. So this is first, this is second, and this is third. Now we want this to be a single grid item and this to be a single grid item. So what we could do is we could surround these two down here with a grid item component, like so. Make sure you import it at the top. And then this would be now a single grid item. If we save that, we can see that now we have the sidebar on the left and this on the right, okay? So what I'm also gonna do is wrap a grid item around the sidebar as well. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let me cut that, paste it down here. And the reason I'm doing that is because on this we can pass in props to say how many columns this particular grid item should take up, whereas we can't on this span. So for example, I'm gonna enter onto a new line and I'm gonna say, I want this to display, not as a div, the default item that it outputs as, but as an aside. And then I will say the col span is gonna be one column. So it's gonna take up one of these six columns in width on the grid, okay? Now, I also wanna give this a background color. So I'll say BG is equal to purple and then dot 400. And then after that, I'll say the min height of this is gonna be 100% of the page, basically. I need to spell height correctly, min height. Now, the way we do that is by saying 100 and it's gonna be HV. So now we should see over here, it takes up 100%, okay? of the heights of the browser. That's the sidebar. Now then, I want to come down here and style this one as well. And in fact, we'll give this some padding. So we'll say P is equal to 30 pixels. I'm gonna do a similar thing for this grid item down here. This time, I'm gonna say, I want to display this as a main tag. And then the call span is gonna be equal to five because we have six in total. This takes up one column and this takes up five columns of width. Now the padding for this is gonna be equal to 40 pixels. And I think that will pretty much do. So now if I save it, we can see this takes up one column. This takes up the rest of the columns on the right. Okay. So then that's working. 
pretty good, right? So that's how we use this grid component. Again, if you want a nice, easy, simple way to make a grid pretty quickly and you don't need that much flexibility, you can use this one right here, simple grid. You can specify the spacing, the number of columns if you want, or use the min child width so it automatically scoots elements down onto the next row at certain widths. Now, if you want a bit more flexibility, a bit more control, you can use this grid component and we can use the template columns property to say how many columns we want and what width they should be. And, with, and then inside that, we can manually dictate how many columns of width each grid item should take up. Okay, so that's the two different grid components that we can use. Now, there is one problem with this grid component right here. Whereas this one was responsive by default using this property, and we can see that if we make this smaller, it automatically adjusts the grid and the grid items, right? This grid component right here doesn't allow us to do that. So you can see as we get smaller, this sidebar gets tiny and it doesn't stack one on top of the other. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna look at how responsive styles work with Chakra, and we'll do that in the next lesson.